Our first guest met with Dr. Jackson earlier this week about the allegations against him, and he says he respects his decision to withdraw. Republican Senator Jerry Moran sits on the Veterans Affairs Committee. Sir, thank you for joining us. Melissa, good to be with you. Do you think those allegations were fair? Melissa, I, I mean, we don't know. They're just allegations. There's no one who stepped forward and publicly associated themselves with, this is my statement, this is what I saw. Uh, and there's nothing in writing, no report, no evidence uh, of, uh, with, with one exception, no evidence as to this being a, a, an occurrence, an actual event. And so my view is that we needed to have a hearing, they, these issues need to be aired, uh, and that's apparently not going to happen. It's difficult to make a decision what the truth is when you have somebody uh, with allegations, but no person who's saying under oath or even publicly, this is what I saw and this is the problem with this nominee. Well, I mean, the doctor says that he, he couldn't have lasted this long through these different administrations and kept his job and kept his clearance and all these kind of things if these allegations were true. Does that make sense to you? Melissa, it does make sense to me. I, again, I don't know what the truth is. The, the allegations are serious. They, they matter. Uh, the content matters. But it does make sense to me that a, a, a physician at the White House who's been through a vetting process, an admiral who's been promoted, those individuals go through reviews constantly. Yeah. Uh, and one would think that if there was a problem, that would have appeared. I'm told, I've asked to look at the FBI report. I may not do that now. I, maybe I should, but yeah. see what is in there. I'm told there's nothing in the FBI report examination of this, uh, of, of Admiral Jackson that demonstrates these facts. Okay. So that's where I, I thought the hearing would uh, make a difference. We'd uh, have witnesses, perhaps under oath. If they wanted to tell these things, tell them publicly and associate themselves with them. President, very upset about this. Here's what he said just a few moments ago. He's a great man, and he got treated very, very unfairly. He got treated really unfairly. And he's a hell of a man. Okay, let's go inside. We'll go in the Oval Office. Who's it? It's so obviously take your kid to work day there at the White House as well. It and is. you see the president surrounded by kids there in case anyone at home was wondering what that was all about. Um, so what do you think going forward? What does this mean for the next person? Uh, how does this change how the institution is run and, and who's willing to do it? Melissa, this is so important. I mean, uh, every cabinet secretary matters. I take this moment to congratulate my fellow Kansan, Mike Pompeo, on his confirmation uh, to be the secretary of state. We're glad that has finally uh, occurred. Uh, it is a process that is uh, flawed. The, the president complained about taking 30 hours, and uh, that rule is in place for, for legitimate reasons, to find out what's wrong with an individual, yeah. not to be used just to delay every nomination. And that's what we've seen so often here uh, by Democrats in the United States Senate, just dragging everything out. What's next is we desperately need a, 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 a person at the VA, a secretary who has the capabilities, the drive, the intellect, the experience, and the respect that a, a difficult agency to, to lead needs. At the moment, we have an acting secretary, but the gaps in service of secretaries creates a, a, a hole in the leadership at the VA, an agency, a department that's very difficult to manage. Choice, uh, very important to President Trump. The, the idea that veterans can access care closer to home in their home communities. We're ready to pass legislation. It would be so helpful to have a secretary in place that helps us get that accomplished before Memorial Day. Do you have any names, any ideas of who you'd want to see in there? Are you hearing any names floated? No, I, I know that your reports indicated the president said he had several individuals in mind. Yeah. Uh, I've not had conversations with my colleagues uh, about anybody in particular. It is a very demanding job. It is, almost makes you wonder if anybody is up to the capabilities yeah. of, of fulfilling this responsibility, but it's so important. Uh, nearly 200,000 Kansans, their lives are affected. Our, our veterans at home, who that Secretary of Veterans Affairs is and how he or she leads that department, affects the lives daily no doubt. of veterans at home. No doubt. Senator Moran, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks so much. We're